And now, the Bellhops Tabletop, where we look back and summarize what's happened since we were last here. What games hit our tables? Every week, we like to take a look back at the games we played and the events we attended and other cool gaming stuff that's been going on. You can catch the blog version of This Week in Review at tabletopbellhop.com under On Our Tabletop. All right, so Monday night was Thanksgiving, and that's actually when Deanna and I played The Secret Lab. Now, the only thing notable here that I haven't already mentioned about the game is that we found a decent new coffee shop called Chow Coffee that sadly closed early because it was Thanksgiving, even though I made check to make sure they were open. So it made us have to pack up the game part way through. Now, here's one thing I didn't mention in the review. You really don't want to break up that experience. You want to play it straight through, like set a good two hours. Yeah. They, so that's a lesson learned. Like if we do this again, we're going to make sure we go to a coffee shop at noon, not at 10 at night, knowing that, or nine at night, knowing they close at 11. And, and honestly, I'm not even sure a coffee shop is a great idea for this because again, part of the whole concept of the escape room is that immersion. And it's, it's tough to kind of really get, your head sunk into that game if you're in a public space. Um, that I guess, might, I don't know. I don't know. Being away from the kids and my mom was much easier well, to focus on the game. Than fair <laughs> fair <laughs> enough. Fair yeah. enough. I guess if you've got enough distractions at home to keep you uh, keep you out of the head space, then maybe maybe the coffee shop is better. So your mileage may vary. I'm better at ignoring the, the, the public than my family. That's all that <laughs> is. <laughs> All right, so the other big event that happened this past weekend was a horror Halloween-themed game night at Easy Mode, the eSports Lounge. Um, I'm a huge fan of themed game nights. Like, in general, I would rather be at or host a themed game night than an open game night. Uh, There are a few reasons for this. One of them being that it helps me filter down my game collection. We talked about this on our Picking Games segment a few episodes back. Uh, let's me limit what I have to choose from. I got a lot of games to pick from, but if I go down there and I'm only looking for superhero games, that's a lot narrower list. Um, the other reason though, is that they tend to make the game night special. We talked about this earlier when trying to raise money, right? It's not just another game night. It's pirate night or it's superhero night or it's horror themed game night. This tends to help out with attendance. It's always been our themed events that get the best attention. And frankly, I, Added bonus, I just think it's kind of fun to play a bunch of games that have a similar theme in a row, a similar and style. And it's also helpful to get people uh, in a mindset. So, you know, if you're going out to a game night, you don't know what you want to play. Maybe you're not sure. But if you're going to a superhero game night, you have a mindset. And let's be honest, a lot of geeks are really into role playing, even if they're going to play board games. So mm-hmm. you might get cosplayers coming out. Yes. Why not? You know, because it's fun and you know what you know what you're getting into. So this past Saturday at Easy Mode, uh, all of these things were a factor. Uh, I had fun picking out spooky and horror-themed games to play. We had the best attendance we've had yet at Easy Mode. And as far as I can tell, everyone had a great time. Were there anyone in costume? No, no one Uh, in costume. I don't think we did a great job of advertising that it was a Halloween night. That We could have done better. So I, I think that was part of it. Now, I started off the event teaching games. Actually, I spent the entire event mostly teaching games this time. Uh, But it was teaching them to gamers I'd never met before, which was awesome. Now, I was along with Sean Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton. Um, And the two of us, well, actually, Sean had never played it before. Uh, We played Monster Factory. Now, this is an easy-to-learn and play tile-laying game from Mayfair. Uh, To be honest, this comes from my kids' game collection. But this is a game I find adults dig. And while building monsters is just good for a halloween theme right it fits that theme uh this game you're drafting tiles you're building monsters the tiles are different cr- creepy gro- gross goofy body parts uh the edges are either open have a skinny green part or a thick purple part and you all of course have to match them and try to build a complete monster once you finish your main monster you can start building minions and what's neat is your main monster is just worth as many points as tiles it took your minion only scores points for the number of eyes on its tiles which i thought was a cute thematic theme It's a silly, simple game, but it actually does have some skill because the one key rule, the killer app, is that when you draw a tile, you can play it on your monster or someone else's. So that's the neat bit of, oh, man, do I make his harder? Do I try to do mine? And so on. We had so much fun with Monster Family. We actually played three games in a row. And while we were playing, different players swapped in and out. So that was it went over way better than I thought it would. So you just have to remember, again, this this is a aimed at a kids or family game. It's not, it's not a weighty game. Um, and, and there are some, you know, it's not a gamer's game. 
But no. for a thematic event, that doesn't necessarily matter. And that's yep. that's one of the keys here is that when you're doing a themed event, you're looking to get people into that mood. And sometimes mm -hmm. fun, silly games are just what the doctor ordered. Yeah, it's one of those, like, to be honest, it went over that well, and that's what the people were in the mood for, right? Like, that set the tone by, by playing Monster Factory first and with these new gamers. Like, these gamers were, were video gamers, easy modes and eSports lounge. They were advertising the event, and they got some other, I don't know what these people play, Fortnite players, we'll say. They, they could have been League of Legends players, whatever. These video gamers come out to their board game event. These are not people who knew hobby board games. So after they enjoyed Monster Factory, I stuck to lighter games for most of the night, and I broke out King of Tokyo next. Uh, first game, five players, um, which was pretty cool. Um, this was their, their first experience with something a little bigger than Yahtzee. And King of Tokyo was pretty much always a hit with new gamers. And it didn't fail me Saturday. Our mixed group of tabletop and video gamers had a great time playing. Uh, we actually ended up playing twice. The second, I threw in King of Tokyo Power Up, which is the, the gamer's expansion that makes it more of a gamer's game. And we had another player to the group, so we got up to six players. And I got to say, this sold the game to the video gamers. Like, I'm Maybe here's where they're League of Legends players, because, man, they love the idea that their characters could evolve. Uh, of course, they're making Pokemon references, but it was like, oh, if I roll three hearts, my monster evolves. They really dig that. Uh, I got to say, these guys love this game so much that if Easy Mode sold games, we would have sold a copy of King of Tokyo and the expansion right then and there. Well, that's that's awesome to hear. Uh, and it's interesting because, again, I, my experience with King of Tokyo, even with the Powers expansion, was with a big table, I, I didn't really enjoy it personally. So it's awesome to hear that uh, it uh, it worked for them. Yeah, we did cheat, though. We played with more players than the game allows when we played it on New so, Year's that one night. That's true. And I think that that was a bad idea, to be honest. I was trying to include everyone, and I should, <laughs> I should have stuck to the listed player count. So at this point, we had six players all playing together. We split up. Uh, one of the, Another local gamer showed up, Sebastian. Uh, he was really hot to play a game called Ghost Stories. It's a brutally hard cooperative game. Uh is put out by Asmodee. He took these these video gamers and like, I'm going to show you something new, right? So he went off and did that, and that left Sean and I. Uh, kind of looked around. There were other people were all playing games, and we decided to play Sorcerer. Now, Sorcerer, for a horror-themed game night, just look at the art. Like, it may not be what comes to your mind right away, but man, that game's got some creepy art. Uh, it's been a few weeks since I played Sorcerer, and I'm happy to say I still remember how to play. That was nice. Uh, Sean had played before again, Sean Hamilton, not Sean from Hamilton, uh, had played a couple times in our four player games we had done at the CG realm. So he kind of knew the game. So it was nice to be able to jump right in. It was also cool because we knew the decks a little better. So like, instead of randomly picking or anything, like I knew what I wanted to play and he knew what he wanted to play. So that was cool. So we, we strategically picked our three decks. So that was neat. Um, game was good. Uh, it was not only fun, but tight, like really tight. Game came down to a final fight for the middle battleground, which Sean should have won, but I was able to delay for one round. I had basically summoned Cthulhu. I don't remember its name. And the battlefield was exhausted, so you don't resolve it, which gave me first attack next round, because then I was first. Had Sean gone first, he needed one crit to win. That's it. Any one of his monsters got one crit, it was over. With me going first, I just had to do five total damage before he got that one crit. Dice were with me, and I managed to win the game. That was the most enjoyable and closest game of sorcerer I played yet. Well, that, that's great to hear because I mean we've had some we've had some misses on that game, but uh, you know it's good to hear that you know coming back to it after a little while, you know getting some separation from all those earlier plays that mm -hmm. were they're more for review. Um, that it's still just a, a fun game when you play it with the right number of people. Yeah, with two people, with two people, four, four people was okay, but two's two's the sweet spot. Yeah. Now, while we were playing Sorcerer, we were joined by Kui. Uh, it's someone who was at our Board Game Blitz tournament. People recognize him. He came in fourth. Um, with him joining and knowing he liked more strategic games, I started to, to move into a little heavier stuff. So I borrowed a friend's copy of Dungeons & Dragons Tyrants of the Underdark. I don't know, Drow, Horror, Halloween, maybe, I guess. I don't know. This one might have been pushing it, but hey. Um, that gamer was Justin, um, who had only recently bought the game, and it wasn't even punched. Personally, I love the lonely fun of punching games. I, that is something I enjoy doing by myself in the basement with Netflix on in the background. Uh, 
thankfully, Justin is a little less neurotic with his games than me and was cool with us opening his game for him. There are probably people out there listening to this right now cringing at the yeah. thought of someone else I know. punching their game. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I sometimes I'll let people help, but no. As for Tyrant City Underdark, it continues to impress me. Like, I, every time I play it, it's, it's better and better. I, I see more depth to the game. Uh, we played a three-player game. Um, I would have liked to have played four players, but at that point, everyone was playing something. Like, just to note some of the other games going on. Abomination, the era of Frankenstein. You're in, like, old London trying to build a, a, a Frankenstein's monster. That looked like a really neat game. Uh, Sebastian was still doing ghost stories. And there was a large group of casual gamers who had showed up. Uh, they were doing some kind of writing-based party game that they were laughing their butts off. So that just left Q, Sean, and I. So Q had never played before, but he's familiar with a wide variety of deck-building games and played folk on a map games, right? You got an experienced gamer here, so the teach went well. I thought for sure I had this game. Um, I had a great promotion-based strategy going, but I missed how quickly Q was getting troops out onto the battlefield. Like, it was insane. The game ended, like, I like I wouldn't say two turns early. It was, like, ten turns early. It was, like, the game was just over. Like, I'm sitting there doing my strategy, and I'm promoting stuff, but I'm promoting basic cards at this point, trying to clear my deck. And then I look over, and Q's got, like, three troops left, and he's got, like, six different, play like, six troop cards. Like, I'm like, oh, my God. That hurt because I only promoted the weak stuff instead of promoting the big stuff. So I, I kind of failed on that. Overall, though, it was great. Uh, it's not just me that digs it. Q had never played it before, and he pointed out at the end that he thinks it may be the best deck builder he's ever played. Wow, that's quite the uh, quite the comment. And welcome, Trash Aroma. Thanks for joining us. Uh, up next, I got the kids' games out again. Uh, for I don't even know why. I wanted to stick the theme. I think that was part of it. Was like we played Tyrants and I wanted to stick the theme. Uh, one of the games I brought was Coast Fighting Treasure Hunters. Um, this was the same group of players who just played Tyrants of the Underdark. And I got to admit, the look on Q and Sean's face when I brought this Mattel's game out, like this is a kid's game from Mattel. And they went, wow, the board looks like Clue. And actually, Sean Hamilton made a good point. He's like, no, I recently played another game that looked like Q that was way more fun than I thought. And he was alluding to... um cypress legacy so he was willing to give it a shot q though kind of gave me a sideways glance i now i haven't played ghost fight and treasure hunters for a while so i did have to do a quick refresh on the rules uh it doesn't take long they're about four pages um it was mostly set up we started playing and man that game plays smooth like in this game you're playing kids who are sneaking into a haunted mansion to steal eight gems and it's it's cooperative, you're working together, you're fighting the ghosts, your monsters are spawning. It's just a neat game. And Sean and Q both loved it. Like, we played once, and we lost on easy, and then we played again with, with the advanced rules that add the complication of having to find the gems in order. Wow. And doors locking. Oh my God, Sean Hamilton has the worst luck ever. As soon as he got in front of a door, it would lock. And then the nasty draw three new ghosts, then shuffle. Like it was, we lost both times, but man, it was so much fun. Like this still reaffirms my, my thought. I honestly believe those fighting treasure hunters is the best kids game ever made. And this is three, I don't know, I guess you could call us hardcore gamers. People who play a lot of games that had a great time laughing out loud. People coming by, what are you guys playing? We had Justin, who's playing the Abomination game, getting distracted, right? Like, he was like, what's going on? It is such a great game. Yeah, no, they were, and they're pointing out it, it, it won Kinderspiel in, in 2014. Yeah. Uh, also, I, you know, I love the game. I've, I've played it. I've, uh, it was fantastic. And it's fun for, it's fun for adults. It's fun for kids. And it's fun for adults with kids. Yes. Uh, it really does have this great universal appeal. Um, it's, you know, we call it a silly game, but it's got a 7-1 on BGG. Yeah. I mean, this is I'm not a game Mattel. with a lot of a lot of hate. And what we need to get our hands on, there are two expansions for it. Two now. I knew about one. And there, there are two expansions, and they're actually well-rated, too. There is 7-5 and an 8-1 for the newest one. The, uh, the Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters Creepy Cellar expansion... That just came out last year. Yeah, is is over eight. Um, wow. Yeah, it, it just hasn't been on sale. That's <laughs> the main reason I haven't picked it up. So at this point, we played. We finished Ghost Hunt and Treasure Hunters. I was good to go. I was like, all right, what are we playing next? And then Sean pointed out it was already ten thirty, and the event runs until ten. 
So that's something I've always done with my events. My events run from 5 till 10. But easy mode is open till 2 a.m. And people are welcome to hang around and stay. And what was neat this week is, like, despite I was leaving, there were a lot of people who were staying till 2 to play more games, which is pretty cool. So it's good to say that. Uh, overall, it was a fun game night. Uh, it was probably one of the best nights we've had at easy mode yet. And I hope the trend of getting more people out gaming and gaming later continues. All right. So uh, how about look ahead? What do you have planned for the coming week? All right. Well, this Saturday, again, this only really matters for those of you in the chat room. Uh, it's another spooky, spooky, spooky. I don't know what spooky, spooky means. <laughs> spooky themed game night. Uh, this time we're at the CG realm. Um, there I am going to be doing demos of Dead Man's Cabal, playing necromancers who want to go to a party. So you got to resurrect some guests. A uh, very unique game from Pandasaurus Games. I'll be showing that off, but there'll be other creepy, goofy games there. I'll make sure to bring Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters. But the big thing, and the big thing everyone's heard us talk about a million times, and there's good reason for it, our biggest gaming event of the year, the Extra Life Gaming Marathon. You don't want to miss this one, people. Like, if you're anywhere local, if you're in Ohio, I, I drove to I drove to Columbus for Origins. Come on, drive up to Windsor. Like, the, this is going to be worth it. Uh, and for me, I need to get this, make sure the stream is uh, prepped and locked down, uh, and I've got some camera tests to run to make sure that everything is actually going to work the way I want because the piece of hardware I, I want doesn't even exist until after Extra Life. So yeah. I hope you get to play some games too, though. I hope you're not just all doing the stream. Well, I, I, I fully expect that I think, uh, you know, once we once we get into the late night that, well, yeah. uh, I, you know, we'll I'll, I'll pull up to one of the tables and, and put my ears in and have the stream chat running into my ears yeah. if necessary so that I can just play. But to be honest, I don't expect a lot of people to watch. But yeah. hey, we're going to put it out there. If people want to join, there's going to be yeah. a donate button down below. We want people to spend some money. And what we should try to figure out is the food thing. We got to figure that out. The, the buy us food. We got to mm. get that working for right. the event. I had it set up, but we're going to have to keep doing that. Well, and, and NG Games is talking about how you're going to hate the uh, uh, auction because it's going to last oh. three hours. But we do have the option to swap you out. So, I mean, I can... Yes. I can do some of that uh, if we want if we want to swap out and you're you're dying. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I should, we should have pointed that when we we're talking about. You know what? To be an auctioneer is not that hard. No, I've now I've now done it six times. It's not yep. terrible. Nope. We had a real auctioneer one year. Um, that's about it. Like, and then then it's going to be the the extra life con crud, the equivalent, the the con drop of extra life. Right? <laughs> it's it's basically a con for us. Right? It's a two day con. It's it's a big deal. I'm I'm probably going to crash harsh. Yep. <laughs> 